a little bit about the branding and marketing and image. Marketing happens to be the one thing that confuses the independent a lot. They see all the messages that happen around them. They see all the noise of messages. And they think, well, I can do that. First of all, marketing is uh, very expensive. <laughs> There's no way around it. Some of these national restaurant chains are spending millions of dollars a day on advertising. There are several restaurant chains spending between two million a day and three and a half million dollars a day, every day, on advertising. So as an independent, if you think you can compete with that, you're wrong. It won't happen. But what you can compete with them on is a personal approach to marketing. Okay, so we were talking about the complexities of marketing and, and the difference between marketing a national chain and marketing an independent. Needless to say, the dollars available for marketing an independent are nowhere close to what's available for a national chain. But that doesn't mean that you can't be effective in your marketing strategy. During your phase of pursuit, it's critical to get the flavor of your marketing message figured out at that time. Don't wait until the restaurant's open and operating or even a few weeks before it's ready to open and operate to determine your flavor and your message. Um, again, each concept has its own style of marketing. Part of that becomes the fact that each style of restaurant has its own price points that go with marketing. Pictures of food sells. There's no way around it. By showing pictures of food, it helps the customer think about the food and therefore they buy it. But they have to be high quality pictures. There's actually people called food stylists that actually get paid very good money to make sure that pictures of food look right with your marketing. Steam coming off of it, moisture, freshness, full. You gotta think about what your food's going to look like when you present it to the customer. One of the biggest complaints we get when we do surveys of customers is that the food picture they saw and the food they actually got don't match. I, I believe that is a big part of the fact that you don't have operators, in some instances, running companies. And therefore, they don't think about the impact that that picture from that food stylist has on the consumer, and then the consumer is upset because they don't get it in the field at the, at the unit level. Well, so as you're creating your marketing and branding strategy, you got to think about the image of your business. Now, there are three ways. I don't care how you slice it. There are three ways to target your marketing. Humor, sex appeal, value. If you're not one of the three, you're not going to be effective. Humor, sex appeal, value. Humor can be anything that the consumer might deem as funny, unique, different, memorable. The Chick-fil-A cows. Their whole campaign is based around fun, humor, unique, quirky. It works because of it. It works. There's plenty of restaurant independents and national chains that use humor to drive the customer marketing message. Sex appeal. Sex appeal is de defined in multiple categories. One is beautiful women. You can use beautiful women to drive the customer marketing message. Beautiful men. Beautiful environment, picture of the building, picture of the ocean, picture of the mountainside, right? 
Those are all sex appeal. For that matter, using power-driven sex appeal, which might be fast cars, cool technology. It's all sex appeal. And then the third is value, which is I'm getting a good deal for my dollar. That's where independents tend to make the mistake. They think by offering a coupon, that is value. It's not. Okay? Value is in the mind of the consumer. Value is not necessarily what I pay for something. The independent too often thinks value is cheap. The customer does not see cheap as a value. What they see is, I got more than what I paid for. That's how they define value. I paid for something, and I feel like I got a huge value.